Hi everyone, how's everyone doing today? Today we're having an episode of Re Behind the Scenes. And we're going to be specifically doing it on, it's going to be different because this time we're going to be doing it about a private lending deal. So it'll be really, I think this will be fun to hear how a private lending deal went. And I believe we're going to be talking about two private lending deals and the problems that were encountered. So I think you're going to really enjoy this. It's going to be a lot of fun because you get to hear if you want to be a private lender, you'll get to hear about all the different problems that came up. Eddie's going to be on. I can see he's on. So just give me a minute. Let me invite him in. Oh, he's not. Uh, oh, he's unavailable. So Eddie, I think you may have to update your, actually, you may have to update your Instagram account because it doesn't let me, uh, yeah, it's not letting me add you. Uh, and just to let you know, Eddie also has to be, you have to be on your phone to do it. So, because uh, Instagram only works on your phone. So we'll give Eddie a couple minutes to just update his Instagram so that I can invite him while we wait for that. I just want to let you guys also know. So yeah, so we're going to be talking about a private lending deal, which I think will be a lot of fun. You guys will really like to hear. So if you're a person who wants to uh, just know what a private lending deal is, like how to private lend your money, this is so this is the one you want to uh, this is the one you want to uh, see. Okay, so there's a question: How many rentals do I have? Um, I'm more in the private lending side actually. So if you're just talking about rental units, I have. Units, units or houses, but let's say units, because I'll say that I, I have three, four, five, six, I have nine, nine rental units, but I'm more on the private lending side, and I also right now I'm more into flipping, so I have like two flips also on the go right now, and I have six private lends, so if you guys are interested, <laughs> and um, but I also wanted to let you guys know that this month we are having a networking event and we are going to be talking about or we're going to have our guest speaker is going to talk about OPM. OPM is other people's money. So if you're also looking to know how to leverage other people's money, how to talk to them about it, this is the networking event that you want to meet because the first hour will be about OPM. So how to... Um, find the money, talk to them. We'll see how he's going to, we'll see. It's going to be Marcin Rose who's going to be talking about it. So we'll see what he has to say, but he's going to be basically telling, like helping us to figure out how to find and attract that money, how to talk to the people. And then after that, we do a, we do a one hour um, where you get to do one-on-ones with the guest experts. <clears throat> and you also get to do uh and it will also be with the attendees, which I think is something so important because you do want to, um, if you're really interested in getting in real estate and Catherine's online so she can tell you, you your community is so important. So getting to know people in real estate is, uh, okay, so I'm not sure actually, Eddie, isn't a bit mean like later, later, like we need to just restart or... Um, yeah, Eddie, if you can let me know if it's you need to, if we just need to restart the live later or because uh, I'm not sure what a bit means, but I'll just keep on chatting. Yeah, so Eddie's just uh, updating his Instagram. Um, so, which is your best city to invest in nowadays? Hmm, good question. I can tell you. Um, I would say it's not really about the city, to be honest. It's about the investor. Um, so I can tell you, for example, one of our flips, um, we just bought a property in Hamilton. And a lot of people were saying, for example, that um, the prices are really uh, that it's oversaturated, sorry, that the, it's oversaturated and it's really hard to find a property and the prices have gone up a lot. 
But like, let's say with us, we found a value that was appraised for 100K over what we purchased it at. And, um, and, and all, one of the reasons, obviously, because it needs to be flipped. So the amount of, like a flip is very expensive. So that to us is actually very normal. But um, it doesn't really, to be honest, it has nothing to do with the, the city you're in. It has to do with either you or your partner, like finding that good deal, right? Because for example, like I've invested, a, I have a lot of investments in Ontario, like in Ottawa, here in the GTA, a little outside of the GTA. I also have some in New Brunswick, right? So um, it really more depends on actually your money mindset is what I would say. So if you are a person, and especially this is for noobs, it is very hard, for example, to go into a million dollar home. Like we're flipping a house right now that we bought it for 1.4 and it's gonna be selling for 2.4, around the $2.4 million range. Now for a noob, that mindset will probably be too crazy for someone to do something at those levels. So for example, going to New Brunswick or Alberta or Saskatchewan where you find money, like houses for a lot less, is actually easier for you because because you have like money mindsets that you have to unblock and to give you an example is for example before i got into real estate to me like a thousand dollars was a lot in the sense of investing i guess in like not investing i don't know like a thousand dollars seemed a lot right but now that i'm in private lending or no let me give you sorry in a private lending sense for example 10k seemed like a lot right but now my my numbers have shifted quite a bit like to me now 100k is like standard like if i if i if if i i don't less i don't lend less than 100k so um so, so it's yeah there's just it's your money your money my your money mindset is really important for real estate investing um and as you do like the little ones you slowly start graduating. And uh, actually, you guys will probably also want to know, this weekend on sa a Saturday at 11 o'clock, we're having an Ask the Experts, and they're gonna be, they're two investors that have invested in Airbnb, um, Maltese, and, and did house hacking and a student rental. So we're actually gonna be talking about all the different kind of strategies that they went through and how they learned and how they've upgraded. Cause they've actually gone really fast and gone fast through many different strategies, um, which is important for you to know. Um, yeah, it's very important for you to know. Uh, I mean, to go through it, right? When you're learning to do real estate, cause for me, it was the same thing. Like I went through wholesaling, I went through burrs, I went through flips. And I did private lending. Like I did a lot of different, a lot of different strategies to figure out what interested me. One of the reasons, for example, I'm in flipping and burrs is because of my husband. My husband has a renovation business. So we do that. But I can tell you, we only have two flips. I have other investor friends that they have like 10 on the go. Right. So I can tell you, like, I'm just getting this flips are for him, to be honest. It gives him like work to do um that he that he likes right but for me i'm more actually heavily invested is in private lending like i'm i'm lending yeah like i think i have six or seven projects for sure six private lends that i have lent out right now right so i'm more heavily invested in lending out to projects that i really like that i can't get involved in um or for example that i don't know the people well enough to let's say partner up with them so i prefer to private lend first get to know them and um, and then maybe decide, you know what, I, I do want to partner up with you as a JV. And then we move into a JV type of thing. Um, so yeah, so I'm more on the private lending side. The only reason I do burrs and flips is just because my husband does renovations. And I mean, I might as well put him to good use and make help us make some more money in that way too, right? <laughs> uh, okay, let me see. Okay, so I'm going to see now, Eddie, sorry, go. Uh, yeah perfect okay so Eddie's coming on so finally we have Eddie on
let me see. He just has to accept it. Let me just double check that he, that I sent it. Sometimes it can be weird. Yeah. Okay. Hey, I see a blur, but we have something at least. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm seeing the back. You How about that? Reverse it. There you go. Perfect. Is that better? Yes. Yeah, sorry about you? that. I didn't. Good, good, good. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't know that you uh, had to go through the mobile. I was sitting here in front of the computer waiting to be invited, and it's like, why is she inviting me? <laughs> <laughs> no worries, no worries. But we figured it out, which is what is important. And then, so yeah, good, I was letting good. everyone know that we're going to be talking about probably two of your private lending deals, right? Or a couple. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah we can do I that. Think it'll be fun yeah. because it was and read behind the scenes. We normally do flips. Talk, we talk about flips or burrs. But it's very important to actually also talk about private lending because there's lots of people who want to private lend and it's nice to know what are the problems that are encountered there. So thank you for sure. coming on. And let's start with just tell people a little bit about you, your experience in private lending, just a little bit about you so people know where you're at. Sure, sure. I, um, uh, hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Eddie. Um, <clears throat> so I started uh, back in the early 90s, really. Um, doing some uh, seconds, um, uh, second mortgages um, back in the 90s, and I also had a triplex. Um, so I'm aging myself by telling everybody, you know, when I started. Um, but um, <laughs> you know, there was a there was a, a gap. So so back in the 90s, I did a few, probably about half a dozen uh, small uh, kind of seconds uh, through a mortgage broker. So that was my first kind of like introduction to um, a team. Um, so. Uh, the mortgage broker at the time would follow me deals and they were small deals. They were only like 20, 30, $40,000 uh, kind of deals. Um, and, um, and then it kind of, I kind of stopped for, for a while, actually quite a while um, until just a few years ago uh, where I, um, I joined uh, a real estate group uh, that uh, Diana and I are actually part of. I don't know if you're still part of that group, but we're, uh, we're that's where we met uh, a couple of years ago now. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and um, Diana, actually, I lent a, I lent a private deal to Diana way back when. Um, so yeah. we uh, we've been we've done deals together. Um, so um, you know, so over the past few years, I've done I've done mostly lending specifically to um, uh, investors. Um, I won't really do deals with um, with like homeowners or people looking for seconds to like put a pool in their house or something. Um, it, it has to be with with investors like um, most of you are um, and um, it's, it's really important to me um, to to do these deals with with uh, investors because I like to see um, people succeed and in their in their businesses and especially in investing um, so um, what's important is the personal relationships um, I think everybody here knows that we can't really do well without having a good relationship with our fellow employers or uh, investors. Um, so, you know, um, so I started doing the, I start. I came back in a few years ago and now I do first, seconds and uh, JV deals. So even, even though you may all think that um, uh, this is just a lending game with interest rate and, and term and all that, there are other ways to actually lend money. Um, you can lend money in a JV deal, um, which I just recently did with, uh, with another, investor um, and um, that's just another way so you kind of like expand your scope a little bit uh, don't just think it's just um, what's your interest rate and um, and you just get paid every month um, you can swing deals and you can combine a JV deal with an interest rate deal together at some, at some points um, so it's, it's important to kind of know your um, know who your investor is and um, get to know them and then uh, you know uh, do deals. Um, so that's basically, I mean, um, what I'm all about. Um, my deals are, are dependent upon the project, uh, meaning um, it, it's, you know, I get, I get a lot of people, I, I, I post something on Facebook and I'll get right away, what is your interest rate? What is your rate? What's your rate? What's your rate? And it's really hard to answer that question because every deal is different. Every deal has a different spin. Um, there's LTV, there's loan to value, there's uh, eight, eight, uh, the, the appreciated value, the, the, um, the after repair value, 
um, you know, where the, where the home is, how much they're wanting, the term. It's, it's very much um, every deal is unique. Um, so I, I can it's never funny stress you say that. It's funny that you say that because it is true. Like someone's like, it's always a, to say the interest rate and it's just, I don't know, like just think of whatever the standard rates are right now. And that's what it is. I'm like, until, yeah, until you actually tell me what's going on, can I actually give you a realistic interest rate? <laughs> that's right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's all rate. It's all uh, deal dependent. Um, so, um, uh, I find I find that's the only real way um, to to keep like um, you, you'll find you'll find a uh, somebody to um, partner with or deal with, and then going forward they know you they know they know you're not just going to get throw them a rate uh, they know that you're, you're going to deal with them like like speak back and forth and come up with a with a solution. Um, I rarely have um, a situation where uh, somebody asks me for a rate. And it goes. It never goes one uh, uh, back and forth just once. It's um, it's back and forth. What you know? How long do you want it for? There's lots of questions that need to be answered. Uh, asked, sorry, I should say asked and answered. Yeah, and like because you said, even you as a lender have specific criteria that you want, or uh, just to to know about. So, and it's not just yeah, because it's never just oh loan to value and just interest rate. Like yeah, it matters. It may even no. matter. It is the kind of strategy that you're doing. Because same thing, like, let's say with me, I only really do, my strategies are only lent to flips and burrs, for example, you know? So so right. if someone gets right. up, yeah, another one, most likely I'm like, sorry, I'm not interested because that's just not my criteria. That's right. that's right. Yeah, same here. We have the same the same kind of uh, deal. And and for me, for me, it's, it's all about, um, you know, it's going to sound funny to everybody here, but I'm not here to make money. Uh, I'm here, I'm here to make money, but, it's second. It's kind of secondary for me. Um, I kind of like to see you guys kind of um, build something, you know, for the community, if for yourself. You want everyone to win. Exactly. Exactly. And and for me, winning winning is is obviously making a little bit of money. I'm not like you know trying to be a billionaire over all this, um, and make make a little bit of money, and then help my fellow investors out to create housing, to create a community. And to make money, right? So, so it's all those things. So when I'm when I'm looking at a deal, I look at all those things. I don't just look at how much I can make. Um, it, you know, the people. I was going to make another comment about the people who ask. Um, you know, what's your rate? Um, I think that if you're a seasoned um, investor, the rate shouldn't matter. It, it really shouldn't because you're flipping or you're burring. It's a it's a it's a very finite amount of time. It's only it's only six months or three months or nine months. The rate, I mean, you go from ten percent to twelve percent, and it's only like depending on the amount, it's only a few hundred dollars. It's not it's not, not going to break you. So if if you're asking me every time what's your rate, I look at that and go, well, you're not serious. You're not. I don't think you. I don't think you've analyzed your deal enough um, to 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 know that. You know, I mean. If it's twenty percent, then it's crazy. Then you know. Yeah. Then, then what you know, you're getting at is like that probably shouldn't be the first question because there's so much more involved. And normally, if you do yes. your numbers at least with the standard rates of like what it is standard right. at that time, you already yeah. you probably already know what the rate is, and it's more yeah. like that. It's just oops, sorry, my dog. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna move this over here. Sorry, <laughs> He's laying beside, right beside me, of course. Has to be. But um, like, it's just about more of exactly what you said, like making sure the criteria meets for both people and right. the person doing the flip or the burr. Uh, I mean, okay. they should if they did their analysis, they know what their interest, what interest rates work for them, right? So they'll be like, you know okay. what, I'm good. I'm good at my top being, let's say, twelve percent, but obviously, maybe I might want to, like, if I can get less, better. But that's not really. Yeah, right. what matters, right. Right? right? Yeah, yeah, and and the the investors themselves. I like to get to know them. I, you know, I don't want to just start throwing money around. And you know, I, I do get a lot of um, like uh, secondhand like brokers um, will send me a deal. I don't really know the the the, um, the borrower that much, but I look at their portfolio and I see what they're all about. And you know, um, what is your intent? Like, what what is their intent? Is there, you know? Um, and, and I actually like to analyze their deal as well uh, for them. Because um, if I get a newbie 
um, I'll tell them. I'll tell them straight up. I'll say, look, you're, this deal sucks. You're not going to make any money. And I don't want to take advantage of you. And, and mm -hmm. I just say no. You know, even though I could make money, um, I would rather, I'd rather bring, them, bring them up to the point where they know what they're doing and then they can come back to me and we can have a, a, a deal. You know? Yeah, I so, completely uh, that's, agree. That's, that's, yeah, that's, uh, the most situation happened to me too where it's just like, you say no, but you explain why kind of a thing because yeah. oh, they yeah. need to understand, yeah. please don't get into that deal. Like you're probably going to put yourself in a bad situation or something. <laughs> that's right, that's right, that's right, yeah. I mean, the, if the numbers don't make sense to you, then they're not going to make sense to me. And, and then what am I going to do? I'm going to sit there and, and, you know, make money off this guy or girl or person that, uh, that, uh, take advantage of, I'm not in, I'm not here to take advantage of anybody. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. the rate, the rate that are, the rates that are there are reasonable, uh, with the, with the amount of risk that you're taking. Um, you know, depending on if it's the first, second, whatever the loan to value is. So you're, so you're taking, you're taking a, a risk. So your interest rate will be, you know, kind of like subjugated to the, to the risk. Um, so, um, yeah, so that's, that's what, that's what I'm all about. Um, you know, um, if you guys want me to talk about, uh, deals, I can talk about deals. Yeah. Let's, let's get started with, um, let's talk, let's, we'll do one at a time. So tell sure. us a little bit about what kind of deal you were, um, lending to. Okay. And let's incorporate okay. also the numbers because it's, you know, I think they'll go hand in hand. Sure, sure, sure. Um, definitely. Um, so um, I did a I did a deal recently about a year ago. Um, so um, a, a cool strategy is I don't know if you guys tried this or thought of this is is to co fund uh, on deals. Um, just because you don't have enough money doesn't mean you can't jump in in the game. Um, you have to you you can you find some a, a partner, not just another a lender. Uh, and you, you like them and you get along and, uh, and, uh, and you're striving for the same things. Um, you can co-fund on, on deals. There isn't uh, it's not a, it's not a, um, there's a MIC, which is like a, like a, a mortgage type of, um, like a partnership. Like a corporation. Um, corporation. Yeah. A corporation. Yeah. There's a MIC or, or there's, or there's a co-fund and a co-fund is more two people or three people who just kind of get together, pool their money together and um and uh, lend so so about a year ago um a fellow investor wanted a hundred and i think it was one hundred eighty thousand dollars and um and um i could have i could have done the, the whole thing but i thought okay let's let's do it with a partner it doesn't you know um so i ended up going for half um we did it uh, through uh, a trust company um which allows you to use your rsps um, I, I hope a lot of a lot of your viewers know the um, concept uh, behind using your RSPs for lending. Um, it's excellent. It's tax free, kind of, um, and it's clean, and um, um, and you get good rates. Um, so we ended up uh, um, co-funding on the deal. I put in eighty. He put in eighty or ninety, uh, and we used um, the the deal was based on uh, uh, ten percent interest rate. Uh, for six months and um, I knew at the time that uh, well um, the way things were at the time uh, it was hard to find materials and people and all that so I knew it was going to last longer than six months uh, but the borrower was very adamant and he he, uh, he said no no it's going to be six months but um, we put in a clause that if it went over um, that he would um, then up the interest rate to 15 percent so I who's going to say no to that? Um, mm -hmm. I, I really like the border. We, we get along very well. And I, and I said, well, you sure you want to do that? And he's like, no, 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 no. I want to keep my, my lenders happy uh, to come back. And um, so that's the type of, that's the type of investor that you, you, you want to deal with. You want to deal with somebody who knows you're trying to, you know, make some money and he's trying to make some money and make everybody happy. So we can continue a relationship. You know? And, um, and I get along Right. And on top of that, we get along uh, very well, we communicate very well. And uh, if anything happens, then I know that uh, he's he's there and he's understanding. and I'm understanding. And, you know, we can move, move forward together on, on, on deals. Mm -hmm. That's great. And let, let's give yeah. some people some definitions, actually, of things, because um, 
uh, it would be good actually because uh, I don't know if people have ever known about, uh, let's say, working together with different private lenders. Because I'm assuming you're talking about that, for example, let's say if you guys all went on first mortgage, right? And you had the, like the two of you guys just went on first mortgage. Um, and then, yeah, right? So that's what you did. You you went, right? right? Yeah, so that's, exactly. uh, that's good that you brought that up, actually, because I've never talked about that. <laughs> so it's good that you're bringing it up because uh, it's good for yeah. people to know that, yeah, if you never have, if you don't have enough money and... Yeah. Um, and like you said, the partnership and knowing the person is very important because you, if you guys, for example, need to go through a foreclosure or make a decision to take out money for whatever reason, it needs to come back out. You do right. have to have that good partnership uh, communication because you can't just pull it out yourself. You actually, since there's two of you on the first mortgage or second mortgage, you could both have right. to make the decision together. Exactly. Exactly. Um, exactly. And and when you're signing, it's it's a partnership, right? So when it goes to the lawyer, and um, you have one lawyer obviously to take care of the whole the whole thing, and it's very very structured. Um, you know about him; he knows about you. Um, the first mortgage is known by the by the by the mortgage company us. Um, so it's it's really a good good way for you to get into uh, larger kind of uh, money deals that you normally couldn't. Um, so it's, it's a good entry point, in other words, um, uh, for, for a beginner, um, to, to get in or, or, or novice to get in. Yeah, I agree. And another thing that you brought up too, was about the RSPs or for example, like, yeah, so you, so people know we, you can lend out your RSPs and you can lend out your tax-free savings account, um, so that's great that you also pointed out that out. There are, there are obviously special, like, you have to go through certain specific companies that can only do that. Uh, but I wanted to also yeah. just bring that up because uh, I wanted to make sure people understood that it's like you can actually lend out your RSPs or your tax-free savings account, which you specifically did your RSP. So I think that's awesome that you also brought yeah, that up. Yeah, yeah there's only, uh, I think in Canada, there's only two I can think of companies that do it. If you want to, If you want to plug them, go ahead. Uh, yeah, but there's, I think there's one. Olympia Trust, is the one I know. Olympia right. Trust and Community, right. I think Trust is called. Uh, those are the only two that okay. I know. Yeah, it's out west, isn't it? Out west, uh, I think. I think Olympia is out west, and yeah. uh, I don't know. But I just knew there was two. Uh, I ended up going with Olympia, um, and if you go with Olympia, just so you know, there are fees. Um, it's like one hundred and eighty dollars a year. Um, and then there's fees that are um, like for every, it's like fifteen dollars per uh, transaction. Um, but those fees get charged to the uh, to the borrower, um, uh, so you don't have to worry about fees. Uh, but um, you do have to pay them in advance. You know, like uh, when you first open the account or you first um, move your RSP money into the Olympia Trust, it's like one hundred and seventy dollars. Um, I don't think you can get the the borrow to pay that um but the 15 dollars a month you tack that on to to your fees yeah and it's just it's and it, and it's just good to take yeah exactly you said mm -hmm. like it's good just to take in consideration like what are all my expenses so i just make sure the interest rate that i'm charging you know is covering that plus you're still making the money that you would expect so at least there's no right. surprise of like, oh why am i not getting everything that i expected and maybe feeling a little disappointed right. Well, I, I, I think uh, what happens on close actually is you, you can add it on close. So you don't have to incorporate it into your, your um, you don't have to incorporate it into your interest rate. You can just add it all on close. So all your fees that you, you accumulated, you just add that all on close. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to worry about um, upping your interest rate or anything. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So there's, yeah, part, there's many the different ways you can decide to, to structure it and, I think it's just the important thing is to know what all your expenses are. So you're taking it into consideration when you're doing right. any private lending deal. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So did, you have another, so did we finish that one? I think we finished all the basics of the numbers and. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know if anybody has questions or anything yet, or I, I can't, I'm not sure if I can no, see not, any not, comments. Not yet so far. Okay. Great. And, um, um 
did you want to talk about the second one or, did, or sure what, sure well, I think I think we we're through the, the first one. I think, um, and oh, and also, um, it did. Uh, just so everybody knows, it did go longer than six months, like I anticipated. Uh, it went nine months, um, so there was an extra three months of fifteen percent interest. Um, um, the project was a was a triplex conversion uh, in Sarnia, and it took way way longer than he anticipated. Um, it was a complete gut. He put two hundred thousand into the into the project. And um, he's um, he's holding it now, so it was it was a, a burr. Yeah, it was a burr. Oh, okay, that's nice. Yeah. And that yeah. one was. Yeah. So he's doing. Yeah, and, and I'm surprised actually for a gut, I would have definitely also expected it to be definitely more than six months. A gut takes a long time to get yeah, done. Yeah, even yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. In all in all honesty, I didn't know the specifics enough. Uh, I found out after the fact. Um, cause I kind of asked them what's going on. Why is it taking so long? And, um, contractor, this contractor, that, you know, um, and, uh, parts and, you know, materials and, and all those things. But the actual details of the whole thing was a gut. And that's why it took so long. You know, that, that, that came out later. Um, you know, he basically kept, I think a kitchen sink and a toilet, <laughs> <laughs> and the rest was all. <laughs> the rest was all, you know, new. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so the the next deal um, I have is um, is actually in flight right now at the moment. So, so you guys are are going to listen to the live play by play. Um, it's it's happening right now. Um, it was with an investor. Um, um, he has quite the portfolio. Uh, he's not new in the game. He was he was um, he's been around. It was for a first mortgage for 146,000 or 145,000. Um, ARV was 250. It was a flip, and he uh, was putting 45,000 into renovation. Um, so on paper, it was great. You know, it was uh, you know the numbers were good. I liked I liked the borrower. We, get, we got along, um, and um, so uh, along it went. Um, so it was a six month deal to begin with. And um, ended up uh, before before the first mortgage payment was made. Uh, I got a letter from the title company uh, saying that uh, there was a second mortgage put on the property, um, and the second mortgage was put on the property on the exact same day as the first mortgage was put on the property. So I was a little I was a little surprised, and I was a little like, "What what is this? What do I?" You know what I do? Call call my lawyer, and my lawyer basically said, um, and I didn't know this. This is new to me. Um, if you ever have a first mortgage, um, if anybody wants to do a second mortgage on the property, they have to come through you as the first mortgage for first right or refusal. Um, I didn't really know that, and my lawyer said, "Well, we could take legal action now. We can actually we can actually you know repossess the house right now. We can just say we can foreclose." And um, at the time, I thought, okay, you know, we haven't even started yet. And um, so I contacted the, the borrower, and we, we spoke, and he, he said it was an honest mistake. He didn't realize it was so close, and um, uh, I believe him. Um, so we went forward with, with the deal. What did you mean it was um, so close? Say again? What did you mean by it was so close? Meaning that the, the dates were, it was, it was on the same day as the first mortgage oh, okay. so it got registered it got registered on the first the first uh and he was aware of, of the rules of of you know you have to contact the first uh, the first mortgage in order to put a second on um so um it, you know time time went forward and um everything was fine he's making payments on time and then three uh three months in um uh, i get another letter and uh this time it was a construction loan or a construction lien um, and, um, and I was, uh, uh, taken aback once again. Um, mm -hmm. and I started looking at the numbers and, um, I realized that, you know, by the time he pays off the first, the second and the construction lead, he's underwater. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm just like, um, you know, I, I was, I was really skeptical what was going to happen. Now, what I didn't mention was, um, and this is the errors that we make. And I'm willing to admit that I made an error. 
um, I also gave them a construction loan. And um, this was on top of uh, the original. And it was based on, it was based on once again, the, uh, the ARV um, and uh, the value of the house and, um, and, um, and him as, a, as, a, as an investor. Um, so just so, a question, so did you do, so you sure. had a, a first mortgage and then a construction loan on top or with the whole loan was a construction loan? It was a, no, it was a first mortgage and a construction loan on top, almost oh, like okay. a personal, and we wrote up, we wrote up a JV agreement for that. So oh, I so had it on paper that, sorry, go sorry? On. you're asking something. Um, I was just gonna say that one was that just a loan that was in a mortgage. That's right. Oh. So it was it was part of a it was part of a JV deal, separate JV deal that I said I would uh, help him with the construction loan, and um, it's part of. And when it, the the house gets sold, then he pays me um, the construction. Loan. So you can see where this is going. Um, so you know, in retrospect, I, I don't think I would have done it again. Um, but at the time. Curious of your thoughts at instead, how come you did it separately? Why didn't you just make your first mortgage more? Uh, like what? I could have. Well, I could have, but it was it was a. Um, I didn't want to give him all the money at once. I wanted to give it to him as he needed uh, for that reason. So I had it separate. I didn't want to forward him all the cash, and then who knows what happens. Um, I asked for photos for pictures of as the construction went forward and I would look at the pictures. I'd see the, um, the estimate that the, uh, the contractor gave him and, um, and I'd give him a schedule, uh, 25% upfront. And then as time went on, show me pictures of things being finished and then I would forward him, um, the cash. So I didn't want to, I didn't want to give it all at the same time. Um, which is why I didn't do that. I didn't, I didn't loop it in with, uh, with the mortgage. Mm -hmm. um, as it turns out, um, you know, um, okay, so, so uh, after all that was said and done, um, the household uh, for, I think, 220 I'm not too sure how much the house sold for. And uh, now uh, it's sold on uh, August the 23rd. Um, I, I have the first position mortgage, um, and I still haven't received my funds yet. Oh, so how, so now there's then issues with the close because I guess there's too many um, mortgages on it that it can't cover it. You can't cover it, but but um, as far as I know, uh, first mortgage it doesn't matter. I don't really care about the second mortgage or the construct or the construction lien. I don't care about any of that. I should be getting my first uh, mortgage back, mm -hmm. but I'm not. So something is going on, and I'm not sure what it is. Oh. And that's where we are right now. Yeah. Yeah, real interesting. So I don't know. I don't. This is a first for me. I usually, uh, you know, it'll close and then the next day, or maybe even as far as a week, maybe you should be get, getting your funds. But uh, but it's it's been three and a half weeks. August, right? August third. Twenty third. Twenty third. Twenty third. Twenty third. But we're already yeah. in September sixteenth. That's interesting. So I feel like we'll have to do like an update on that to see what yeah. happens. Cause, uh, that's really sure. long closing. <laughs> that's a real long closing. And what's really interesting is I I got to see the lawyer to lawyer chat and chatter back and forth. Um, and the lawyers, um, my lawyer is like, "What's going on?" And the other lawyer is is saying, "Well, uh, he didn't have enough equity in the deal, so we can't close it." And my lawyer is like, what do you mean you can't close it? He, my client has first position. And um, so further, further to all that, the construction loan, and this, and this is where the, um, the benefit of being close with your investor, where your borrow is. I, I called him and I said, what's going on? He, he felt bad. Um, and um, for the construction loan, he's, we're setting up a, another deal for that. Um, he has another property. We're going we're gonna to put, um, put it against that property. And he's just going to set up a uh, interest only uh, 12 percent 12 interest, and this is him. This is him offering it to me. He's like, okay, I'll give you twelve percent, um, and I'll and I'll secure it against this other property that I'm acquiring, which has uh, equity in it. Um, so so that's the benefit in keeping close with your uh, with your investors is to have that kind of relationship where you can. 
right? So I'm not afraid. You know. Yeah, communication is, is paramount. And of course, you know, um, I, I was I was thinking what's going to happen? Is he just going to not return my calls? Is, am I going to have to go after him? But no, no, he's a good guy, I think. Um, he just uh, over leveraged himself uh, a bit, a bit. And, um, and now he's a little bit of trouble, but, uh, but he's a, he appears to be a stand up guy. Um, and, um, we'll see. So I have a one year deal with him for the remainder of, um, of the construction loan. Mm -hmm. And, but that's just that part. And then, oh yeah. And I guess you're still waiting for the closing. Cause this is just the house, right? Yeah. That, that it was renovated. Yeah. yeah. You would say, for example, like I had actually a closing that took two months. It took two months for it to close. Oh, but that was a building. Really? So building a little bit different. Buildings actually okay. will go through much longer closings. Uh, yeah. Than so, like yeah, houses yeah, usually yeah. like the longest I think is like maybe a week where you may have a week or two weeks where you may have delays like maximum. But yeah, so it'll be right, definitely right. interesting to hear. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm not. Uh, I'm not. Uh, I'm not uh, stressed. Uh, I'm not stressed about it. Um, the house is sold. I know there's if you sold for two twenty, even two hundred, my money is still there. Um, I think it's just I just don't understand what's going on um, with them not closing it. It has nothing at all to do with me. The fact that there isn't any money there uh, to finish the deal, um, nothing to you do with me. You know what it is. All. You know what it is. It's the second, the second, and it and it sounds like they have a third. It's those ones that are the uh, problem. Well, it's yeah, this is, he has a second and a construction lien. Yeah, so those are the problems. That's what's stopping it right now. It's not you because like that, like they, when they sell a house, you have to clear everything out. It has to be cleared out. And if not, then for example, like the second can stop it from happening or the lien, the lien for sure is stopping it from happening too because it has to be paid out. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. so that's what's happening. So okay. it's most, the lien really? for sure can definitely stop I mean both stop it both of them will stop it the lien will stop it because you have to clear out the lien you have to clear everything off title right for the next person to buy it and unless of that person that's buying it decides that yes I can assume this uh or I want to assume it then they can do that but I mean obviously who's going to want to assume like a lien on title and and a mortgage that is worth more than they're already buying it for right 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 so so the so the buyers uh, haven't it hasn't cleared they can't move in mm -hmm. it's still it's still in in flux wow okay well um it, it is it is what it is and, and that's one of the things i wanted to tell your your viewers is as an investor you have to prepare yourself for stuff like this mm -hmm. you have to have uh, ice water trains because you know it's a lot of money and you have to prepare yourself for potential loss you just have to and and, it, and if you're not ready um, if you're not ready to, to to take a loss, then you're not in the right business. Like, if if you think um, if you think you're going to take your life savings and start to start to throw it around and uh, and in this business, then I'm not sure if this is the right place for you. Um, you you should have you should have um, you should be prepared. That's all I'm saying. Is is you should be prepared. It doesn't happen. Like. Rarely, well, I, rarely, rarely. Yeah, and what I would also say is, um, it's not that you're not getting your money back. You will be getting your money back. It's that yeah, it's going to take time. obviously time. So I think in yeah. that what you're saying is more of like, if it's money you need right now or in six months, okay. don't spend it. Don't put it into lending. Right. But if it's something That's like right. if you can tell yourself. I don't need this for five years. I don't need this for 10 years. Or I never need it. Like it doesn't affect my day-to-day -day life. That's the money that you okay. want to put in private lending. Because exactly you said, like imagine exactly. if you go through the power of sale. That's probably like a, I don't know, depending on, like if you go through the full thing where you actually go through the whole power of sale, that's like a three to five year timeline. And yes, you're going to get all your money yeah. back. But at least know that you'll be getting your, but at least if, if you keep that in mind where it's not, um like you you can wait that long and it's not going to affect you in your like day-to-day -day life then lend your money out like i best that's basically what you're trying to say right it's like yeah, you know exactly yeah exactly don't don't uh don't uh put your life savings out there you know it yeah, should be it you, should be uh, it should be money that uh, i wouldn't call it like expendable or anything like that 
but it should be money that that uh, you can do do without for a little while. You know, mm-hmm. um, if you do, you know, like in my case, it was a first, so so I'm kind of like I'm safe. You know, the construction loan is being taken care of on the side, but um, you know, you're first. You know, so it's just a matter of time before you get your money. That's all. So curious now that this happens has happened to you because I bet I, I bet the main concern I guess now is not the concern but I guess the learning experience is more like what would you do next time would you stop for example that second mortgage from going on or what do you like what do you feel like you would have done differently uh, well, if, uh, if a similar scenario happened it it could never be identical. Um, I mean, the chances of the second mortgage coming in before the first payment has even come out yet. Um, maybe if it was like three months in, you know, like three months into the into the deal or a couple months into the deal, he's already made a few payments. Then it's like, okay, wait a second, you know. Uh, but it just got off the ground. It, you know, didn't even take flight yet. So, you know, I can't. I, I, if I was put in the exact same position, I'd probably do the exact same thing. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's, it, but it will never happen again. Like the chances of that happening uh, again are, it's like next to impossible that somebody does the second on the first, like mm-hmm. the same exact date first. You know, it's it's yeah. more of a, it's more of a shock than anything. Um, but so let me ask even, you. Uh, so, but was the problem then that the second happened on the same day or, or isn't it just that a second was on there? Because, for example, if a second came on, let's say two, yeah, two, three months later, would you have changed anything on the way you would react to it now, knowing what's happened yeah. now? Yeah, yeah, I would. Like I said, it was it was just because it was I hadn't even got the first uh, payment yet. Um, I didn't know kind of like what 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 the situation was, and I thought, okay, well, you know what, I'm first. You know, I'm first. I'm safe. I shouldn't ha- I shouldn't really care if there's a second. Um, but now that now that I've gone through it, you're asking me with my experience. Yeah, I probably would have after two months. I would have said, yeah, uh, I'm going to close. I'm going to foreclose on it and sell. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Because now I know that. Now I know that. See the second, the second. I know I know the amounts of the second, and I know the amounts of the the, the, um, the construction lien. So even with the second on, we were still in good shape. Mm-hmm. So you know. I'm, Right, so so I kind of looked at the numbers and I went, okay, we're still in good shape. It's only another thirty thousand, um, and it still is under the ARB. Um, and I and at, the, at the time I thought, okay, so what I didn't what I didn't count on was then on top of that a construction lien, yeah. which then blew it. So mm-hmm. so what what I, what I can say I I, I uh, learned was it's never over. Like just because one event happens, that doesn't mean another one can't happen, and another one, and another one. Yeah. So it just yeah, it's interesting because right? let's say yeah with the construction lien, to be honest, there's I there, there's no way of stopping something like that from happening. So yeah. if a construction lien is added on to your property, I mean I think right. like would you lend to this person again from what's happened? No. Yeah. No. I feel like the same thing. If I I feel like if I lend to a project, and they and a, a lien got put on the house, I feel like. Yeah. Pro- the management of the money is probably not that good because yeah. the lien came no, on, and I probably I would probably also not lend to them again because I no. wouldn't. For me, I wouldn't no. really mind so much about the second like you did. I probably wouldn't mind as long as the numbers still obviously made sense. Like you think, okay, it's mm-hmm. gonna sell, and, and it'll still sell yeah. above. So both of them get cleared out. Um, right. So yeah, I probably would have been like, I don't know if I would. I would or would not mind. I mean, again, like you said, it's kind of, it depends on how much money is in there and what the value is at that time. Because it it also happening on day one and your house, like if your house is only worth 100K and then now you're like lumping in 150, I probably also would have been like, no, 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 the house is not even worth that much. What are we doing? (laughs) Exactly. And then you take take action, you know. Um, But uh, I think, I'm not sure... uh, how it would have went down if there was uh, if there would have been uh, like legally how long would it have taken me to take over power of sale all that to, to exercise in other words exercise my my right to to mm-hmm. to, uh, to call it in how long would that take 
And in the meantime, he's not paying. So, you, you know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like, do I do that and then not get paid at anything? Or do I just go, okay, I think it's fine. And, um, and uh, the second and plus mine is, is covering it. So, yeah. So. And just to let people know, actually, like the ge- in the generic sense of power of sales, um, you actually do get paid all your interest. But again, it's all about waiting till the end. <laughs> so, I mean, okay. in the moment, okay. you won't yeah. get paid that money. It's, it's more like okay. once all the core fees are in and everything, then finally you'll get yeah. property maintenance. You get actually you do get paid a lot of different things depending on how that power of sale goes. But another thing is also very rare actually to go through a full process of a power of sale. Because normally, especially I think this is why I personally like, and I know this is probably your reason too, why you like working with investors is because the mentality is different than a homeowner. So with an investor, for example, if an investor is going through a power of sale and they understand the bit like what it is to be business, they don't have that emotional attachment like homeowners do. Homeowners get really attached to their houses because their kids grew up there. You know, they have so many memories there. And then the blinders go on and they will ignore that they're going through, like, getting foreclosed and getting kicked out of the house. They'll ignore it to, like, the end just because they don't want to realize it because they have such an emotional attachment to it. These kind of houses will probably most likely go through a power of sale process because of the emotional attachment. Investors were very business-oriented. And so if it gets to a point where like that, like if you did go and went like, you know what, we're going through a power of sale, we're going to push this, what, it doesn't actually go immediately. Like it would have probably, it would first be, you know, the the guy would get sent a letter and now he as a business person would think, do I want to go through years of litigation and all the costs related to that? Or do I want to just sell this and get rid of it and break even or whatever, cut my losses and just get, right? So that's also just, I guess, a tip for everyone, why you would want to go with an investor. And I mean, you still have to do your due diligence on the investor, but why you'd want to go to an investor instead of, uh, instead of like lending to, let's say, homeowners or things like that, because the mentality is very different, right? An investor thinks business, right? right? So they won't get attached to that house. Like they know they got to make quick decisions and be like, you know what, I'm starting to lose money. This isn't working out. I got to sell it and just pay everyone off and cut my losses. Whereas a homeowner doesn't yeah. think that. They're very emotionally invested. Yeah, what do you think? yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah, 100%. Uh, it's all business. And I think in this case, this particular borrower would have definitely gone that way. Um, he's a, he's a, I think he's a stand-up guy. Uh, I just don't think maybe this isn't the right business for him. Um, you know, uh, but, but I think he's a, a stand-up person. Um, we'll see what happens. You know, we'll see what happens going forward. I usually pretty good at judging people, and um, but you know, there's, there, there there could be just a little panic, and uh, when people get panic, they tend to not act like themselves. You know, mm-hmm. um, yeah. so, so right now he's he's getting he's getting it from all sides, and you know, see what his character is. You know, mm-hmm. and I mean, like you said, at least I, he's not ignoring the conversations and i mean that's a testament to both your sides right because you also right. probably didn't go in screaming at him because i'm sure if that happened he would have definitely closed the line of communications and he also mm-hmm. you know is willing to realize like things are going on let's let's figure it out you know let's make a plan yeah. and make sure that yeah. everyone comes out winning or breaks even or whatever like we try to find a solution that works for everyone mm-hmm. Right. So at least That's exactly you know, like in, communication is such a key part of any kind of any kind of business, whatever you're doing. And um, having that relationship is is important because like that, like at least the problem comes up. You can hear their story. You can figure out what is actually going on and decide for yourself, like, what are my next steps going to be? And, right. um, and like that, it's people don't do things from malintention. It's like the guy's not trying to screw yeah. anyone over. Just no, things, no, absolutely not. Things no. didn't turn, yeah, right? So it's like normally with communication and an open mind, you realize that no one is ever trying to screw anyone over. It's more like some kind of mistake happened and the situation. Like, figure out a solution. Yeah, situation, like mm-hmm. something happened and it's just yeah. like we need to figure it out. Yeah, yeah, and and like you said, sorry, go on. Look, like you said, I, I, we should um, have a good relationship. 
Um, and that's what that's the, 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 the whole deal is. It's, it's all about the relationship. And um, with him and I, um, I just, uh, I'm, I'm very open with him. I asked him if he wanted some help. I said, you know, I said, are you, are you, uh, do you have a, do you have a mentor? Do you have a teacher? He goes, oh yeah, I have, I have a guy. And I said, well, you know what, if you want to talk to me about like, let's be transparent. If you tell me what's going on, um, I can maybe help you. Maybe I won't be able to help you monetarily, but maybe I can kind of like guide you. Um, you know, maybe you shouldn't have taken that deal or, you know, maybe you didn't analyze it correctly or, or, or something. Um, but, it's, it's that relationship that kind of keeps things transparent. So, so when I said that to him, he's like, Oh my God, Oh, thanks Eddie. Or, it's just great of you to, to help and, and all that. And, and then, you know, you keep him close and he keeps you close and, and you know, you, you, you finish the deal. But, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah. you know, like you said, I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, lend him uh, anymore. Um, I'll, I, I, tr I try to help him. Um, and that's what I said to him. I said, you want some help with your deals, uh, analyzing, um, uh, but uh, no, sir, I'm not. Uh, I'm not lending you um, anything <laughs> anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and um, yeah. and that's even like that. Whenever I think, just in general, whenever a problem is happening, always sharing that really helps a lot because I may not know the solution to my problem, but someone else may know. And if you share right. that you know create like or people just start becoming creative and like that sometimes when you're like the bubble of stress um you're not your mind isn't even thinking straight also too so i feel like something like it was nice that you did that to him and kind of helped him out like hey you know i know you're stressing through a lot of things and um at least i can kind of give a clear different view because i'm outside of the situation in the sense of oh my dog sorry in exactly. the sense of um like he's going through different stresses and you know you have like an outside view which sometimes we all need that we need that outside view um to just give advice and i think that's a great thing that you did that and um my dog i'm sorry <laughs> but sorry <laughs> i think that's great that you did that and it just helps both ways right lines of communication are open and um you know everyone's always there to try to win and no one's there to try to screw anyone over just mistakes happen and or like that maybe it experienced and whatever that kind of investing was maybe go back to whatever if you are good at or maybe learn from those mistakes and going forward hopefully he fix you know like learns from the mistakes that happens who knows <laughs> yeah somebody uh, you know somebody like that i think just needs a good reset uh, because he's obviously you know uh, taking from another project, be me or some other person. So he's just he's just prolonging um, the the agony. Um, and then at some point, somebody's going to be standing standing there with a bag, empty bag in their hand. Um, hopefully, that's not me. Um, hopefully, it's not anybody here uh, that has to endure that. But I, I figured at some point, you know, at some point, he's going to get to that asshole. Sorry to swear. He's going to get to some, some guy who's not nice like me and he's just going to go to town on him and just say, lawyer this, lawyer up. I'm going to sue you. I'm going to do this and do that. And, um, and then, and then he's done, mm -hmm. you know, um, hopefully, hopefully he can get himself out of it or, or, you know, get to the next deal and then pay out everybody and say, you know what, maybe this isn't for me. Uh, and, um, and that's it. But, um, he does have, he does have properties. He does have a portfolio. Um, it's just, um, it's just like you said, the money management is not mm -hmm. good. Yeah. So what, uh, what tips, after, you know, what tips for anyone that is first time private lender or even just never maybe experienced, uh, like still very new or they haven't maybe experienced even a problem in private lending. Like what tips do you have for, for the viewer? Um, there's a, there's a lot. I mean, uh, one of them is something maybe um, your viewers don't know is uh, putting an assignment of rents on your contracts. Um, so that means um, that, you know, if things go foreclosure wise, um, if they have it being rented, then you as the lender gets that rent money. Um, that's, mm -hmm. that's something that my lawyer suggested and a lot of people don't know about it. Um, I put it in my deals. I get questions like, what is that? What do you mean assignment of rents? There's 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 lawyers out there who don't know what that is either. Oh really? Um, so, oh yeah, yeah yeah yeah. I did that uh, a deal in um, 
in um, St. John's. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I, I said, I want to put it aside. For, and and the, uh, the, the, the borrower's lawyer said, uh, what's that? And my lawyer had to explain it to him. Um, mm -hmm. So that's something that's to put in there. Um, mm -hmm. Make sure 100% you get um, uh, insurance proof of insurance. Um, that's a big one. Um, I, I actually had an experience. I think I told you that one, Diana, mm -hmm. uh, where the where the fire and um, and he had insurance, and so I was covered. So one hundred percent, make sure that the place is insured. Mm -hmm. Ask for proof, right? And that's that's your lawyer. Your lawyer, if you have a good lawyer, and that would that would be my dovetail to lawyers. Um, lawyers are there's some good ones and there's some bad ones, and the bad ones are, and the good ones are really good. So yeah. so fun. Find yourself a good lawyer who who crosses all the T's and dots the I's and and is like you may think it's anal, you may think it's like oh my God, you're going overboard, but no, no, you want you want a lawyer who does everything right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, because um, I thought, for example, insurance was the lawyers would ask for that. Um, like I thought that was part of standard checks, but I'm curious now if it's well, not. I mean, I see it obviously in mine because you know it comes and i mean i do ask for it but i'm curious if well, i never ask for it if i could actually not have to worry about it like the lawyers well, would not try my dog <laughs> yeah, there's, title, there's title insurance um but if if you go i can't remember the last time i got a mortgage from a bank but i don't remember recall him asking me for insurance so maybe they did they do they ask for uh, a binder always the binder, a binder yeah. The, yeah yeah <laughs> But I guess yeah, technically yeah. you're right. Like if you as a private lender don't ask for it, I mean, I guess that maybe the lawyer wouldn't, but you're right. Like a good lawyer should tell you, mm -hmm. hey, you probably want to ask for insurance to make sure yeah. it's there. <laughs> that's, that's my point. Yeah. The, the lawyer that I have dealing with um, that last story, um, he's not very good. And I, can, I know he's not very good. Um, you know, and then I look up his credentials. He was, he was uh, referred from another lawyer to another lawyer to another lawyer. So it was like a, you know, this guy referred him and then so on. Mm -hmm. And um, he's slow. He's, he misses stuff. I have to remind him things that he should know. Um, but um, with a private deal, like you just said, with a private deal, some lawyers are just like private deal. Oh, I, I usually deal with the banks, not private. Um, you know, um, one of the, um, I, I, I would like to, I would actually like to take a survey about um, how you'd like to be paid as a private investor. Um, would you rather have checks or would you rather have um, e-transfers or automatic? I'd, I'd be curious to know what, what most of most of the group here believes in. Mm -hmm. Well, I can tell you from like lending from other pe borrowing from other people, a lot of people like checks, which is really funny because I don't mind e-transfers or checks or tr wire transfers. <laughs> I'm not really too... Okay. I personally, like, the only reason I don't... I would say I don't like checks is just for the fact of because then I need to do the work. <laughs> uh, I need to always okay. put it in. Whereas, like, if the e-transfers yeah. come in and I'm just making sure, okay, they paid, perfect, they paid. Or same thing, a wire, I'm just checking the bank account, they paid, they paid. But I'm... I'm curious what you yeah. think, actually, of, of it. What do you, what's, uh, which ones do you like? Or I'm old school. Um, I don't want to have to check after the fact, because then if it didn't go through, then I'm chasing. Um, so I, I like to have it in my hand um, that when I put it in, it's there. I, and then if it bounces, then it's another story. Um, yeah. But um, I, I have several rental rentals as well, and um, I'm adamant that uh, my, my, my tenants give me checks. Um, because we started with um, e-transfers and first couple months people are like, oh, sorry, I forgot. And, oh, yeah, don't worry about it. I'll get it in there. And just chasing after tenants is, I mean, it's not something you want to do. So, so we just made a hard and fast rule that uh, it has to be post-dated checks. Mm -hmm. um, so to dovetail into post-dated checks, I, I just did one in uh, uh, the one in St. John's and um, the checks didn't get to me in time. Um, you know, because they have to be uh, courier to you, and I was bugging the lawyer to courier them to me. I uh, didn't get here in time, but the relationship was so good with the borrower that um, I just emailed them or texted them, can you do an e-transfer just for the first one? And mm -hmm. he's like, yeah, no problem. So that's mm -hmm. that relationship again. 
bypass the lawyer, bypass everybody, just go right to the board and say, hey, can you do X, Y, Z? Yeah. And, um, and like, yeah, no problem. No problem. We just did an e-transfer and then I got the checks and then we're good. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. That's great. And, um, and it's true, actually, I wanted to point back to something you said about the lawyer. It's actually very true. I, I, not a lot of people know that lawyer, not all lawyer, not sorry, I can't speak, not all lawyers know how to do private lending. So it is actually okay. right, very important to make sure you're finding someone that knows it and probably because the prop maybe the one that you did probably didn't he maybe doesn't do it enough or something um no, no, no. Well, it turns out he was a, well, well it turns out he was a commercial lawyer you know um, right and i i didn't I, I, well, i'm not in the habit of checking credentials you know like if, if a lawyer gets referred to you like if you're looking for a lawyer and they say no i'm busy but i can refer you you kind of go okay well he referred me so you kind of like well you're taking his kind of like credentials and saying okay, you referred me, so I kind of trust you. Yeah. Um, it's only after the fact you start looking at the credentials and it's like, wait a second, this guy's a commercial lawyer and, it's like, and he's doing residential? It's like, oh, no wonder he's slow. Yeah. 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 No, that's true. So I, that's true. That's something even I learned when I, when I was looking for a lawyer specifically for private lending. Same thing, actually. For me, actually, the, more the opposite went. I would talk to people, they're like, oh, I don't do that. I don't do that. And I'm like, oh, is this something that's more specialized? Because I was getting so many rejections. They're like, no, I just, you know, do regular, um, I don't know, regular, just like buying and selling houses, like dealing with that. The, and I was actually getting, if anything, lots of rejections on uh, and not being able to find the lawyer was my issue. And I'm like, oh, my God, how how niche is this that there aren't very many lawyers that actually do private lending? And it is like, Okay. It's it seems to be very different that like that not yeah, very many yeah, people yeah. like employers do it so yeah I I wanted yeah, to just my, point my, that out because it is a great point that you said that making sure you get a good lawyer is so important yeah yeah and and that they do they do investing they do uh, they're they're investor focused um, mm -hmm. the lawyer I have right now here uh, I'm in Ottawa um, and she's in Stittsville um, she was through a referral and initially she was kind of like. Yeah, it's like, what are you doing? Uh, but slowly she started figuring out, oh, wait a second, this guy's a private lender. Okay, so I have to change my game. And so over the last few deals, it's like, oh, okay, now she's good. Mm -hmm. But in, in the beginning, it was like she thought it was just like a bank kind of deal, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but now she's great. She's she's the, she's the an excellent, excellent lawyer. She's a little, little pricey, but I think worth it. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's great. Thank you so much for all the advice. I think like that a lot of people will get a lot of value out of it. And also just learn for those people who don't have never lent before. At least this gives you some insight. Yes, problems may still happen even in private lending. But um, as long as you do it safely, and maybe you have some guidance, maybe for the first one, you're probably you'll be okay <laughs> and uh, like not to stress about it so thanks so much eddie it was awesome having you on no thanks so much for thank coming you very on. much for inviting me all right thank anybody you. wants to check up, let me know awesome See yeah you. bye everyone okay.